Hello there, this is Rosie, founder of Rosie Glow and Enjoy Yoga and welcome to this program which is really all about you being able to embrace all that you are. Um, so as we love up our shadow we can shine our light and we really need to ask the question, what is the shadow? Um, you may have heard a lot about it, you may have googled it. Essentially, the shadow self is the part of us that we just don't like people to see. It's either a part of us that we try and hide from the world or it's a part of us that we try and hide from ourselves and therefore we project onto others. So it's all the qualities that maybe you don't like to own but you see in others. So we wouldn't call them qualities, we'd call them traits, character traits that we don't particularly like. So, oh, that person is selfish. Oh, that person is stingy. Oh, that person is so blind to themselves. Whatever it is that you say about other people, it's always helpful to just, just think about when you point the finger, you're also pointing the thumb at yourself. So. Anything we see in another person, we have, it can't possibly trigger us and frustrate us if there isn't an element of that in ourselves that we're not owning, we're not working with, we're not love, loving. And this program isn't about you getting into endlessly navel-gazing, all the different blind spots that you have, because trust me, other people will show you where your blind spots are. Other people will show you where you're out of alignment and where there is a requirement inside of yourself for more love. And that's all the shadow needs in order for it not to be a powerful force in your life. You don't want your shadow in charge because if your shadow is in charge, this is not you, this is not your authentic self, this is not you in your truth coming from love. This is the you that is frightened, that is um, believing the conditioning that you've received and is living from a fear-based paradigm. So therefore trying to control internal and external factors in order to feel safe in the world. And there's no need for that. We are living in a time now, post the eclipses in August 2017, where thoughts are becoming things at an extreme speed. So it is really, really important that we're not indulging our shadow, we're not indulging lower vibrational states of being for any great length of time. The moment that we notice that we're in a dark space in ourselves, so we're either viewing ourselves negatively or someone else negatively, then it's really important to come back to recentering, to grounding, to realigning with higher frequencies so that what you're bringing into the world is what you speak about and what you speak about is what you want to bring into the world, not what is wrong with the world. So the power of the word is incredibly powerful here because the word really it's one thing to have a thought about something, it's another thing to then talk about it. When you talk about it, you give it more energy. And the more you talk about it, and the more you think about it, the more energy you give it. The more energy you give it, the more likely it is to go from thought form into reality, or, or into your physical reality, I should say. So we are really powerful co-creators. I know the lighting is crazy, and I'm doing this because it's this play between shadow and light, and it's this whole sort of embracing all that we are and seeing the different layers. You know, we like to look from one side, we don't like to look from the other. You know, this is all part of our growing as souls. Another little thing on souls to bear in mind, you know, the outer world at the moment seems to be full of chaos. It would be very easy, easy to uh, believe the Armageddon stories. And obviously, um, fear and manipulation of, of um, fear is how control of masses of people is possible. So it's much easier to control through fear. If people have autonomy, if people know that they're powerful, then it's much harder to control them. So you can reflect on the last however many thousand years of patriarchy and religious ruling and how we've always had to give our power away to others in order to uh, feel safe in the world or in order to have our needs met. As children, we learn how to get love from our family members, how to get what we need from those around us. And so we learn, in a way, to manipulate in order to get love. And this isn't a bad thing, this is part of a process of growing as a human being and growing as a soul. And if you look around, you will see that <laughs> not everybody's at the same state of consciousness or evolution. We're all here sharing this earth, which is a school, 
and you have some very new souls on the planet, so new humans that aren't really very aware of cause and effect. I mean, think of a baby, think of a, a, a toddler, think about a young child, think about a teenager, think about a young adult, think about an older adult. It doesn't matter how old someone is, but if you think in terms of maturity, soul maturation, um, human maturation, this awareness of going beyond just being a biological um, a, biolog a, a biological set of um, components working together to actually bringing in consciousness and living in integrity and alignment. The more we raise our consciousness, the more we grow in our own light by embracing our shadow, the more we evolve our souls and we actually fulfill why we're here on earth. Now there are lots of theories out there, there are lots of ideas about how soul evolution goes and how, how and why we grow our souls and, and why we come to planet earth but what I'll say to you without getting bogged down with all of that is by embracing your shadow, loving your shadow, choosing not to reject parts of yourself that you feel are unwelcome or unlovable then you get to experience life in a much more beautiful way. You get to have a more graceful and easy and joyful life because you raise your vibration. And by virtue of you having a better time, you are able to help other people in different ways. You're able to be a positive influence in other people's lives. Just by the way you are living your life, you are the shining light, the example. So I hope I'm clearing up here what the shadow is. What I've put together for you in, in this little series is really a selection of tools that will help you to shift your focus from the shadow to the light and also to work with your shadow when your shadow comes up or when someone else's shadow comes up in your life and you want to either fight or you want to uh, pretend it's not going on so you freeze or you flight, you go away, you run away. So think about abandonment, rejection, betrayal. Think about the elements of not feeling good enough, of feeling that if you reach out, no one is going to reach back to you. And if you try, you're gonna fail anyway, so what's the point? All of that is shadow stuff, and all of it prevents us from being the exalted human beings that we're meant to be. We're here, as we grow in consciousness, to learn how to be divine humans, to learn how to have a human experience, but as, as a spiritual being, you know, we are not these physical bodies, these are finite. The soul, spirit continues. So you are growing in love, and what you're doing for planet Earth right now by raising your own vibration is you are um, preventing the Armageddon stories from actually occurring. You know, what you focus on grows. So if you keep giving in to fear and worry and stress, then all you're doing is weakening your own immune system, you're lowering your own frequency, and you're lowering the collective frequency too. So yeah, you may have done loads of inner work, and now you're finding yourself faced with more stuff to do. Well, those of us who've done a lot of inner work are here to help to clear, to detoxify the collective shadow as well. So we are doing more than the others. That's true, because we're more capable. We have more resources available to us, and we are showing the way. So remember, we're learning um, how to feed ourselves, how to nurture ourselves, how to be autonomous human beings, sovereign human beings. This is another element of, of embracing the shadow, is that you stop feeding into other stories and they feed into yours. So we stop recreating karma all the time. And this is a time now for us to be socially conscious. It is a time for us to take inspired action. But there is no point in just shooting from the hip and from fear. That's your shadow reacting. What is important is that we are grounded, we are centered, we are balanced in ourselves before we step out to do something because we are going to be more powerful. And as leaders, as way showers, we are all learning to be lighthouses in, in the waters of life, in the ocean of emotion. So whether it's a beautiful calm sea, we shine our light. Whether it's tempestuous and big storms and tsunamis, we stand firm, we shine our light. There is nothing to fear by embracing your shadow. And I know how hard it is when you come across a part of you that is icky, yucky, you wish wasn't there, you can't believe is there because you've condoned this behaviour in other people and you've said it's not acceptable and yet here you are doing it yourself. Well, all you need is love and the tools that I'm offering you are all tools to help you to embrace your shadow, to transform whatever energy is there that is stuck and to allow you to see the bigger picture. 
because the world events that are going on, whether they are actually uh, man-made or whether they are nature reacting to what man is doing and humanity is doing to the planet, or whether nature and the elements are responding to our own unprocessed emotions and thought forms that we've just been shoving away, pretending don't exist because we like the quick fix and we don't want to feel as though uh, we have to do any hard work. Well, whatever the reasons are, we're having an opportunity now, as thoughts are becoming things much faster, to co-create a paradise on earth. It is said amongst many beings working with high frequencies of light here on earth, that Earth has chosen her ascension timeline. So instead of choosing to go down the self-destruct um, route and for this planet to be annihilated by humanity's ignorance and stupidity, Earth has chosen to ascend. So all of us who've been raising our vibration get to experience living on a planet where we can co-create our reality. And the more we practice, the more we can do it with grace and ease. And so we co-create what we want to co-create through focusing our thoughts and our actions and our mindset in the direction we want to go in and we want to see grow rather than what we don't want to happen. And to do that you've really got to use your tools to clear up density and shadow when it shows up so that that is not running the show. So I hope this has inspired you to take a look at all of the videos and the audios that are available. The yoga practice is a hefty one, it's a long one, I'm going to try and break it up but in case I can't then just Give it a go and see how it feels for you. And um, use the resources that are already available to help you to embrace every which way you can love yourself. And it's really easy to be nice to ourselves when things are going well. It's much harder to be nice to ourselves when things are not going well. So when you're in the deepest, darkest pits of your own mood, depression, anxiety, um, whatever's going on for you, that's the time when you need to reach into you. Your higher self reaches into you and offers a hand. And that's what this particular program is about, is you as your higher self stepping in and supporting your shadow to, to be loved, to feel nurtured, to feel light, so that it doesn't need to keep rearing its ugly head and causing havoc in your life. But it can just show you when you're out of balance and you need to come back to more love. I hope that makes sense to you. Enjoy the whole thing. Namaste.